Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. Palm trees are a legendary symbol of Los Angeles, California, but they are dying off and only few will be replaced. One of the causes is a beetle known as the South American palm weevil and a fungus called Fusarium, while other palms are dying of old age. In response, city authorities will replace the palm trees with other species that give more shade and consume less water, important factors for a city that has been overheating due to climate change, which has also contributed to the increase in insects like the beetle that destroy vegetation. According to Elizabeth Skirzat, Program Director for LA's tree planting organization City Plants, Los Angeles is facing more and more heat waves, so it's important that we plant trees that provide adequate shade to protect people and cool the city down. Apple recently published its environmental report for the iPhone X, available for pre-order on October 27th, and revealed that a single phone is estimated to produce 79 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions over the course of its life. This quantity is larger than that of most other iPhones, except for the iPhone 6 and 6S. About 80% of these emissions comes from the production of the iPhones, while about 15% is due to the amount the user is on the device itself. However, according to the report, Apple has taken steps in reducing the smartphone's environmental impact. For example, its retail packaging and stainless steel material are recyclable, while the battery is free of lead, cadmium, and mercury, and has a longer lifespan that increases energy efficiency. New data published by the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency last Thursday showed that global emissions of carbon dioxide remained static in 2016 a hopeful sign that the world is making at least some progress in the fight against climate change. The study showed that although almost all of the world's biggest emitting nations saw falling or static carbon emissions due to less coal burning and more renewable energy, developing nations still have rising rates of CO2 emissions. Jos Olivier, the chief researcher for the report, said that there is no guarantee that carbon emissions will continue to be flat or decrease. This does not change the fact that more than 35 billion tons of CO2 were added to the atmosphere in 2016, and does not mean that total greenhouse gas emissions have fallen. This past Sunday, Paris banned cars from its streets on what was called the Day Without Cars. Although the city has experimented with car-free days in the past, October 1st marked the most ambitious effort, with 40 square miles of the historic city involved. Only emergency vehicles, buses, and taxis were allowed on the streets from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Paris time. Parisians and tourists were encouraged to walk or take public transport instead of drive, and the streets were occupied by cyclists and rollerbladers. The event was meant to be educational, as Mayor Anne Hidalgo was elected on a promise to curb air pollution and reduce car traffic in the French capital, where vehicle emissions are often high. Back in July of this year, one of the largest icebergs ever recorded broke free from the Larsen Sea ice shelf on the Antarctic Peninsula. Three months later, biologists are rushing to secure a visit to the area in hopes of studying the newly exposed ecosystem that was once shielded underneath the ice. As the iceberg continues to move into the Weddell Sea, it will unveil 5,800 square kilometers of seafloor that have been hidden by ice for up to 120,000 years. The research proposal lies with the British Antarctic Survey in Cambridge and would be the first time marine biologists could explore such a unique ecosystem and its deep sea biodiversity so soon after the breakup of ice. That's all for this week's environmental news report. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and help promote environmental awareness. See you next week.